Um, so this was in the American uh, Veterinary Medical Association Journal, and it's an article entitled Silicone Tags Used to Identify Dogs' Pollution Exposures. And this is kind of cool because it's telling us what our pets are exposed to, but hey, they live in the environment that we live in, so it's also telling us what we're exposed to. Um, so it's a silicone tag that attaches to the pet's collar. Um, and so they did a study, this was at Duke University, actually, um, led a recent study to validate the use of the tags to measure exposure to household chemicals among dogs and their owners. One of the major advantages of using these is that it doesn't require a clinical visit. So you don't have to try to draw blood, you don't have to test urine, it's really simple, and it's non-invasive. Um, so they measured residues that accumulated in tags worn on the collars of 30 dogs and wristbands worn by 30 of their owners over five days. So uh, that's kind of cool too, because we can see the difference in exposure. Because remember our, our dogs, well, are on the furniture a lot, but they also spend a lot of time on the floor and they lick things. And so sometimes they have a lot higher exposure to things than we do. So. It's pretty cool that they uh, did both. Um, and the results were published in December in Environmental Science and Technology. It indicated that higher concentration of certain pest control chemicals absorbed by the tags and bands, for instance, the insect repellent DEET, D -E -E -T, and the insecticide permethrin, significantly correlated with higher concentrations of related metabolites in urine samples from the dogs and their owners, as well as with questionnaire owner, uh, uh, answers provided by the owners about their use of such products. The data demonstrates that silicone passive samplers have the potential to be valuable tools for the cross-species assessment of exposures, showing high correlation between the exposures that people and their pets share in everyday environment. Careful considerations need to be accounted for, particularly the potential differences in metabolism and excretion of certain chemicals that may mediate the causal pathway for disease among different species. So for instance, cats are lacking some of the enzymes in their liver that dogs have. That's why cats can't take aspirin. That's why Tylenol kills them. They don't metabolize things the same way. So I'd love to see these tags on kitty cats or a collar or something on kitty cats to measure them as well. Um, and the researchers found that people who re reported using flea and tick preventatives containing fipronil had higher fipronil concentrations on their wristbands and their dog's tags. So if you think that those chemicals that you're putting on your pet are not affecting you, wrong, you're getting that too. You pet your dogs, you hug your dogs, your children pet your dogs, hug your dogs, lick your dogs, kiss your dogs. Um, uh, the silicone tags and wristbands are not yet sold for exposure monitoring, but they see potential uses. I think this would be huge. The big thing would be where do you send them in and how much does it cost to have the testing done, but it would be a great way to clean up your environment and see what you're actually being exposed to. Um, so apparently they've been leading studies for several years to validate the use of silicone wristbands for collecting data on chemical exposures to support human health research. Um, they've used similar comparisons between the pollutants picked up on the bands and the metabolite concentrations in urine and blood samples. And I forget what the statistics are. I'd have to go back and look them up. But glyphosate, Roundup, you know, that thing that's being used everywhere, um, that's in most people and pets' urine samples. So, you know, we're all being exposed. Um, so they first, a research group at Oregon State University first identified the band's usefulness in absorbing pollutants, and since then has also compared those external exposures with um, metabolite concentrations inside a person's body. And let's see, uh, they announced in 2014 that they had created silicone bracelets with a porous surface and found they were useful for absorbing pollutants. So now I'm wondering, should we just wear these and maybe it'll absorb pollutants out of our environment? And off of us? I don't know. I don't know how it works. Um, it says people already wear similar wristbands, which were popularized by the yellow Livestrong bracelets of the mid-2000s and are often distributed today for other charitable causes or given to children as party favors. We got them from Icelandic Plus at Global Pack. I will mine most of the day, too. I wonder if it absorbed environmental pollutants. I'll never know. I threw it away. <laughs> So the bands are inexpensive, oh here you go, performing a test for 150 chemicals costs about $250.
almost all of that from the analysis involving mass spectrometers, analytical standards, and labor. Um, but she says the costs could drop over time if the process became routine. That would be so cool. Like moving into a new house, getting new furniture, new rugs, just seeing what some of the, you know, the flame retardants that are put on things, seeing what those chemicals were in our environment, really cool. Um, so let's see. Uh, so this is another researcher leads studies on the intersections of household pollutant exposures and genetics and cancer risk in dogs. How cool. Her team recently found that dogs with lymphoma were more likely to live in counties with high airborne concentrations of volatile organic compounds. It would be very interesting to use these tags to look at VOC exposures, particularly in dog breeds with high risk for lymphoma. So many uses for this, it's actually pretty cool. Um, so the tags and wristbands are exciting new tools for environmental monitoring and good for measuring exposures to VOCs such as pesticides and flame retardants. Uh, it's still important to measure blood and urine concentrations of certain chemicals, especially those that do not absorb to silicone or that are primarily inhaled. Substances such as silica ash and heavy metals are not picked up by silicone bands or tags, and her research team is investigating links between arsenic and bladder cancer. While silicone tags can pick up what is in the air near a dog's face, that might differ from what makes it into the dog's bloodstream. Yeah. Um, she expects the bands could be useful in gathering information on an array of exposures to chemical products over time. In comparison with the snapshot provided by urine or blood tests, the wristbands can provide a better measure of average exposure because you wear them for a longer period. If you want to know how exposure is linked to a health outcome, you need the best exposure measurement possible because there's a delay often between exposure and when a disease manifests. So unless you have accurate measures of exposure, you might miss the connection. And we know that for a lot of things. For instance, I posted... Um, uh, the award that our article won as being uh, one of the top cited articles on the isoxazoline uh, flea and tick chemical parasiticides. Um, a lot of those animals do not have reactions instantly or immediately, and so the uh, drug companies and the veterinarians kind of poo poo it when the dog develops a problem a week or a month later after being exposed. Um, and I think we need more studies and more proof that these things that are in our environment and being put on our animals are causing these long-term problems and are responsible for, you know, neurologic changes, cancer, uh, you know, a lot of the things that we're, we're seeing more and more of endocrine disruption problems with Cushing's thyroid, that sort of stuff.